I'm an ex-Google software engineer and I just got access to Google's brand new VS Code Killer. How exactly is it and how does it stack up? Let's dive into the details. So for those of you that don't know, a few weeks back, Google came out with something called Project IDX and what exactly it did, I wasn't really too sure. The website that was supposed to provide details about what it was, was honestly kind of hand wavy, didn't dive too much into the details, but I recently just got off of the public beta wait list and I've been able to use it, poke around a little bit and give my initial thoughts on what exactly it is and actually have a better idea of what makes it different from what's already out there. So what Project IDX is, is it is a web-based development environment where the entire development environment is hosted on Google Cloud servers. So essentially on the screen, you have a VS Code-like editor because it's actually VS Code powered, more into that in a little bit. And then behind the scenes, you actually don't run any of the computation, you don't run any of the software on your machine. Instead, it runs on a server that is hosted by a virtual machine that Google owns. So theoretically, it doesn't matter what type of laptop you have, whether it's the most high-end MacBook Pro or like the cheapest little laptop that you can ever possibly find. As long as you have an internet connection as well as an internet browser, you can run theoretically any type of code that you want without any performance issues because once again, the code is not running on your computer but rather a cloud-hosted computer. In this initial launch, it seems like it has a pretty deep integration with Google's development offerings such as Flutter and Firebase. There are dedicated tabs for Flutter and Firebase on the left-hand side, but it also supports other modern web development frames as well for full-stack web applications like Next.js, Vue, React, all the greatest hits. And then on top of it all, rather than using GitHub Copilot as an AI model to help you code, it instead has Google's Palm AI built into your code to help write better code for you. And I think this is really interesting because as an ex-Google engineer, I know what type of software that they use internally. And it seems like they're finally bringing some of their internal development tooling out into the public for other people to use. For those of you that don't know, Google internally uses something called CIDR. CIDR is an internal Google OS the IDE and text editor that's completely cloud-based. In fact, at least in my experience, all of the software development work that is done at Google, none of it actually runs on your machine. You are always logging in or SSHing into a separate virtual machine hosted on Google Cloud Platform, which is like a crazy souped up machine. So it's way more powerful than any laptop you could possibly have. So the performance is always really, really good. And that's actually how a lot of Google employees were able to do a lot of their own development on a Chromebook, which are not known to be powerful. And that's because none of the actual software that's running is done on the Chromebook. And instead it is done on a rent server hosted somewhere else. So it finally seems like this is Google's first step into trying to get deeper into the developer ecosystem, trying to compete with Microsoft because Microsoft is kind of owning the developer landscape right now. They own GitHub, they own VS Code, which is probably the most popular code editor out there. I believe they also own NPM or GitHub owns NPM. And now that they own GitHub, they own that. Microsoft also created TypeScript as well. Whereas with Google, their popularity amongst developers has not been that great. Angular and Flutter are nowhere near as popular as React and then the language that Google developed, which is Dart, is nowhere near as popular as TypeScript. As you can see, they are losing a lot of ground, but it seems like this is Google's first step in trying to win back developers right, by trying to make Google products their home for development tools. Obviously, it's really early and I've not built many complex applications with Project IDX. I just did a very quick overview about it. Now let's go over and let me show you a little bit more in depth about what Project IDX entails. All right, so here is a quick preview of Project IDX. So this is the very first page that you're gonna see within Project IDX. And as you can see, you can either create a new work space like a new web app, new Flutter application, or you can import a repository as well. And that's what I did right here. I created this repository of a project that I worked on in the past. And as you can see, it's a completely VS Code looking environment. And that's because I believe it is completely VS Code powered under the hood. So even Google cannot escape the grips of Microsoft. VS Code is just too good and too popular. So once again, this is a completely cloud based environment. So this is just a normal GitHub project. And right here in my terminal, I ran npm run dev. And what's interesting is that when I click on localhost, 3000, it actually doesn't open up localhost 3000. It instead opens up a localhost 3000 on this completely cloud-based workstation that I don't own. Google owns it completely. And I know there's an error on the application. This is not on Google or Project IDX. This is completely on me because I did not include an API key in this project right now, but that's exactly how it works. And once you have this running, it's not at all different from your local development machine. It's just completely based on the cloud and hosted by Google. So, and I think one thing to note that's really interesting here is that you can definitely see that they're going to be using this to power more of their developer ecosystem. They have a dedicated Firebase tab right here. Since this is not a Firebase project, I don't think that there's much I can get from here, but I'm assuming that if this was a Firebase project, you could then start configuring and managing all of your Firebase tools from within this tab. And then from here, you can open up like 
your project IDX dashboard and some other commands and settings as well. And then over here, as you can see, they're also pushing Flutter in the create a new workspace, create a Flutter application here. And I think this one's really interesting because with Flutter being cross platform for iOS, Android, as well as web development, Google did mention within the project IDX docs that they are going to have live previews of like what your application looks like on an iPhone an Android device and a web device as well. And then you no longer have to run like Xcode and fire up your own simulators. It could done, it could be done completely hosted on Project IDX for you. I could definitely see this being the most powerful Flutter development experience out there. I don't know how it'll stack up to other applications as well. Like, will it really be that much better than VS Code or WebStorm for Next.js application debugging? I'm not too sure. But I think that this is a step in the right direction by Google in trying to regain the love and popularity amongst developers. Because once again, Google's not the first to do this type of cloud-based development environment. Replit is probably one of the biggest competitors out there and it's super popular. And there's also the legacy players like Microsoft and GitHub that also have have Visual Studio code spaces that allow for completely cloud-based development environment. Now, I still think that this is an important development because Google definitely has way more brand name compared to Replit. And if Google can really inspire this next generation of developers, which they definitely can with Project IDX, because by having Project IDX and by running software completely on their cloud rather than somebody's local machine, this opens up the opportunity for developers that can't necessarily afford really expensive computers to still run code. Like somebody, as long as they have an internet connection and an internet browser, which like really any laptop, no matter how old it is, they can still have that. It'll open up the opportunity for those developers, the ones that are not as well off to still be able to build really powerful applications. All right, so that is a quick overview of Project IDX. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited for this because I think the ability to be able to run an entire software development suite completely on the cloud and not on your laptop is really great. And I know that this already exists out there with like GitHub code spaces and VS Code, but I'm interested to see Google's implementation of it. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this means that Google can start winning the hearts of developers again, because uh, they are definitely losing to Microsoft really, really badly in that space. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What are your thoughts about Project IDX? Do you have access to it? Have you built anything with it? Let me know. Super curious to hear about your experience.